Nurses, hey, 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 welcome back. This is Winning Wednesday and your opportunity to be accountable to your goals of passing the NCLEX. And so if your first time is today, congratulations for showing up for yourself. My name is Professor Regina Emerson RN, and I am the author of Quick Facts for NCLEX, which we are studying on this evening. I'm so happy to be bringing this topic to you. Burger's disease, burger's disease. And with this, we are going to continue on our journey of making sure that we are knowledge ready, we are critical thinking ready, and more importantly, we are committed ready. We're committed ready. So let's open up our books too. I'm gonna dive right into it because it's winning Wednesday. And if you missed our Monday motivation, the idea for Monday was keeping the main thing the main thing. And I'm going to talk about in a little bit how we let in distractors that keep us from the main thing. So we come here today to study. By golly, we're going to study. So Burger's Disease, open it up and turn to page 16. If you have quick facts for NCLEX. Hi, my nursing students who are studying. I just want to check out if I put this in the nursing school. I always like to know. It is in the nursing school, page 21. Bam. So you can join us too. Um, but I, I imagine nursing students are extremely busy right now because school just started. Okay. Burger's disease. Now, are you ready? And I'm so happy for you who are passing the NCLEX because that is the real goal right now. It's a great time. It's a great time to pass the NCLEX. So Burger's disease. The first thing that I notice when I read this section, and I'm on page number 16, the first thing that I notice, and I ask myself this question, why does this have two names? What is up with that? Why is there Burger's disease and then thromboangitis obliterans? What is that about? So have you thought about that? Okay, so when you're reading it, know that Burger's disease actually is for the doctor who discovered it. Give him credit. Everybody give it up for him. Burger's disease actually is what will be most commonly shown on the NCLEX, on your medical exams and a patient's chart. You're going to see Burger's disease. Now, the next name is more of the pathophysiology that takes place. So we can actually understand what's happening by looking at this name. So let's break this name down. The first thing that we see is thrombo. What does thrombo mean? Our patient will have an issue with. Exactly. Thrombosis or clots. The next thing that we see is angitis angitis and so we know itis means what when somebody has itis from a medical standpoint not from a cultural standpoint from a medical standpoint when you have the itis going on it's an inflammation of something and so we have an inflammation of the the vessels okay the blood vessels are becoming inflamed and then this final word obliterans obliterans, this also means that the patient is going to have issues with potentially leakage, clots, okay? This is what we are going to see, all right? Patients' vessels are going to be jacked up. Now, we would ask ourselves, hmm, just reading this name, if this is a condition that is not addressed, let me let me ask you this, let me see it in the comments. If this is a condition that is not addressed, meaning the nurse doesn't intervene, the patient doesn't receive the right education, they develop this condition, it gets worse over time, what is the thing that is going to happen to this patient? If they don't seek treatment, if it continues to get worse, they are going to deal with, what's the worst, worst thing? They're going to deal with amputation, amputation. And so one of the very important NCLEX points about uh, Berger's disease is that it is a matter of 
keeping a limb or losing it. Okay, keeping a limb or losing it. Very serious. This is why this is on NCLEX. So, um, let's 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 read it. Let's read it. Uh, the disease is an is. The obstruction and inflammation of blood vessels mainly where? Where do we see Berger's disease uh, affecting the most? We're going to see it in the hands and in the feet. In the hands and in the feet. And so when you're reading this, remember, we're reading this book like a nurse. And so we're asking ourselves, I always see this. Whenever somebody has a circulation issue, it shows up in the hands and in the feet right? Peripheral arterial issues, mm, peripheral vascular disease, Raynard syndrome, Berger's disease. Why are the hands and the feet targeted? Have you thought about that? Do you know the answer to that? That's a good critical thinking question for you. That The reason is because the extremities, the fingers and the toes are the furthest away from the what? If you think about the anatomical position of a patient and you stretch your arms way out, the fingers are furthest from the heart. The toes are furthest from the heart. And so when we have circulation issues, our poor, poor, poor fingertips and toes are the last to get what they need. Okay, so that's why the hands and feet, uh, hands and feet. So what are the clinical symptoms? We're going to have pale blue hands and feet. Okay, um, they may tingle or be painful. They will also feel cold because of that poor circulation. Who is most at risk for this disease? Well, I have here males who smoke or chew tobacco. Typically, Berger's disease is seen in younger patients. And this is a distinguisher between Raynard's disease. And also, one thing that we need to note about who is most at risk for this disease is why they are most at risk. We are looking at people who do what type of activity? We are looking at people who smoke or chew tobacco. This is interesting. This is interesting. What if I said this? Because you know, culture and times are changing. What if I said, okay, we know that Berger's disease can affect patients who smoke tobacco, who chew tobacco. What about patients who vape? Do you know vaping? I think it's everywhere now. And, and the thing about vaping is that sometimes you don't even know that a person is vaping. If you don't know what vaping is, maybe you're from a different territory or maybe you are foreign educated, look up this thing called vaping. It's done in the United States. Are they at risk for Berger's disease? Yes or no? Correct answer, yes. Correct answer, yes. And so the treatment goals are here. Um, there's no cure for Berger's disease. Only symptom control. We have to teach, 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 teach our clients to stop smoking, to dress appropriately for the weather and try to reduce life stressors. Now, this is a huge point that nursing students miss when it comes to Berger's disease. And I'm just gonna ask this question to see if you caught it or not. When we talk about Berger's disease, is the issue smoking or is the issue nicotine? Is the issue smoking or is the issue nicotine? Because remember, it's the nurses who are responsible for helping the patient have a higher quality of life. Yes, yes, exactly. The issue with Berger's disease is nicotine. It's nicotine. And that doesn't matter 
if the nicotine is smoked and inhaled, if it is vaped, if it is chewed, if it's a patch on the skin, if it's gum in the mouth, patients with Berger's disease cannot have nicotine at all. Why? Why, are, why do we care about nicotine? Because nicotine is a vasal constrictor. It's very, very powerful to constrict the vessels. And what's happening in a patient with Berger's disease is that their body, and this makes Berger's disease different from Raynard's or peripheral arterial disease. In Berger's disease, the body is having an allergic reaction to nicotine. And so what that's doing is that's creating the thromboangitis obliterans. That's creating the, the irritated, inflamed vessels that are leaking. And so when vessels become inflamed, when they begin to leak, um, then that is when the immune response comes. Platelets come and clots are formed. And so the patient cannot have any nicotine at all. So when you think about Berger's disease, it's different from Raynard's. You know, Raynard's is stress-related, cold-related, temperature-related, okay? We have to make sure that we don't choose the answer on NCLEX. And let me know if you're learning something. We don't choose the answer on NCLEX that says nurses should tell the patient to stop smoking and perhaps choose an alternative form of nicotine consumption like the patch or chewing gum, right? Because a person who has not really studied this will miss the entire fact that there's an allergic inflammation response to the nicotine, okay? So don't fall for it, don't fall for it. Um, also, uh, smoking cessation is the main stay of the therapy, but we have to make sure that we don't have any kind of nicotine exposure, and number three for the priority clinical points is, of course, amputation is required if this ischemia continues to be present. And that's the start of my study session saying you have to understand the pathway that this condition can have when you are introduced, like if you have a case study, when you are introduced to this idea that a patient has Berger's disease. So when you think Berger's disease, think amputation, if nothing is done. And because there's no cure, you cannot reverse this. You cannot stop this. You have to reduce the exposure to the cause of it, which is going to be nicotine. Okay. So that's how this one is presented uh, to you here. And quick facts, you have to make sure that you understand the main staples of this disease. Now, before I let you go, because we are, look at look at us, y'all, almost 15 minutes. We are keeping our study uh, sessions to that point. Before I, I want, before I leave, I just want to let you be aware that when you come to study, you truly have to make sure that you are not giving in to hidden distractions. So a hidden distraction is something like, what do I have? Um, highlighting. Highlighting every word in quick facts, coloring your book, making sure everything is highlighted. Like if you look at my notes for quick facts, and I like to show you my notes, my notes are very aggressive, okay? Um, you might not understand it, but I do. And what you don't see though is pretty little coordinated, you know, pictures and things like that. No, taking the time to do that is taking time away from actually understanding your material. The second thing is multitasking and not so much multitasking with studying and cooking and reading. That's multitasking that you know better than not to do. You know that you cannot, you know, cook a meal and study quick facts at the same time. It's going to be challenging. But there is such a thing as digital multitasking where you are studying and then you also are texting in a group chat or you are studying and you keep TikTok open. 
you are studying and you are just your 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 digital your phone is there just in case you get a call just in case right and so you're trying to be in two places one digital one physical at the same time that's a time waster the the last one that i'll say before i let you go because i know it's wednesday night is stress if you are not dealing with your stress and you have this loop of worrying while you study, you're, you're worried about, you know, um, am I smart enough? Uh, you're worried about if you are meeting the expectations of your family. You're worried about maybe like your finances. All that worrying loop and thinking about it, am I doing the right thing? Am I going to ever make it? You know, that eats up your memory. That that holds space in your mind that other things can be occupying. So we need to be able to reduce our stress, deep breathe, prayer, letting it go, you know, thinking positive. All those things help you to stay more focused because this journey prayerfully should be a short one. I don't want you studying for years trying to pass NCLEX. That's when it becomes more of a lifestyle. This is not a, this is a, studying for NCLEX is a lifestyle for me. It's not a lifestyle for you. Okay. Your goal is to pass the test and then help somebody else pass it. So that's winning Wednesday. Um, I'll just say this quickly before I leave. I know that you guys were asking about um, discounts for the book. We are still doing the 20% off. If you have, a need for quick facts or um if you're studying with me quick facts for NCLEX is probably the book that you should actually have if you're in nursing school you can get quick facts for a nursing school and if you're just studying you can get the t's quick facts book but everybody that comes to mondays and wednesdays you need to have quick facts for NCLEX and so right now we are doing 20 percent off the courses for v2s which are the videos for quick facts plus the um, the quick facts books with the coupon code remar20 and i'm saying this to you and i'm pumping it out because mm, on september 1st that coupon code will go away that coupon code will go away so this is your opportunity to get this book and get it to you for a cheaper cheaper price okay all right everyone thank you so much for coming to winning wednesday study session I hope you look at Burger's disease now with safety things, keeping the main thing, the main thing for Burger's disease. Congratulations. You have completed Winning Wednesday. And as always, I believe it. You got to receive it, though. You got to receive it. You can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. See you later. Bye-bye.